Hello and welcome to our latest unboxing video. I'm Eliza. I'm here at the Hatfield Public Library with a box of books for adults, uh, fiction and nonfiction. Um, it's a decent sized box. I don't think it's, it's not an insane box. So I think we can make this, make through, get through this one pretty quickly. Uh, we'll start with a uh, sort of thriller, Robert B. Parker's Stone's Throw. This is actually written by Mike Lupica because Robert B. Parker has passed away and it's a Jesse Stone novel. Oh, I've heard some good things about this one. The Guide by Peter Heller, who wrote The Dog Stars and the River. And I guess this is a sort of thriller about a river guide, a guy who gets a job as a river guide um, in a remote canyon for billionaires. I feel like when I read the review before, it seemed like he had some sort of backstory. Oh, he, is, he has some sort of grief, but it doesn't say what happened. So anyways, I, I definitely heard good things about this one. Another thriller. They're all right on top. Uh, this is Vince Flynn, Enemy at the Gates, Gates, and it's a Mitch Rapp novel. And this looks like another one where maybe they've put Vince Flynn on top because he's the big name, but then it's actually written by Kyle Mills. Um, yeah, I don't. It's funny, kind of funny, because I don't know if or is Vince Flynn the the person? No, because the person is Mitch Rapp. I, there's a lot of names on this book, so I don't know who this guy is on the back, but. You know, if you like those kind of books, you know that that's the one to grab. We'll just keep going on this theme. J.D. Robb, who I believe is writing her own books. J.D. Robb, also known as Nora Roberts. But when she's J.D. Robb, she's writing uh, sort of mystery thrillers. And this one's called Forgotten in Death. Forgotten in Death. The whole series is like the In Death series. Do-do-do. Ooh, Nice change, Nicholas Sparks, huge name, so popular. This book is called The Wish. He writes sort of like romantic, sad books. Here he is on the back looking sweet. Oh, this one takes place 1996. A girl is sent away at 16 to live with an aunt she barely knows in North Carolina. And then she meets Bryce Trinket, another teenager, one of the few teenagers on the island and they fall in love. And then there's another timeline in 2016. And my guess is that they meet back up. Just seems, just seems like it's probably gonna happen. <laughs> Here's one I'm personally excited about because I'm a big Sally Rooney fan. She wrote Normal People and um, Conversations with Friends. And this new one is called Beautiful World, Where Are You? Uh, I just love the way she writes. She's maybe not for everyone, like a little more modern style, but uh, for me, just works really well. Uh, she's Irish. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's just sort of like young people dating and living their lives. Um, but definitely if you're, I would I would give her a try. If this sounds good, definitely give her a try. Uh, Fuzz by Mary Roach. And this is called When Nature Breaks the Law. And um, I guess it's about um, when animals... <laughs> um, do things they're not supposed to, like like go out among people or start attacking people, and sort of Mary Roach is looking at like why this is happening and what how it's getting managed by the human <laughs> uh, authorities. Do to do. Here, right matters an American story. This is by Alexander Vindman, who's a lieutenant lieutenant colonel of the U.S. Army, retired. And uh, this is his story. Um, da, da, da. Oh, he reported the infamous phone call that led to the impeachment of President Trump. And this is about his childhood as an immigrant, his career, and the decisions he made at the White House. L.A. Weather. This is like such a classic like cover it's like got the LA swimming pool and then the fires in the background definitely a sense of foreboding it's by Maria Amparo Escandon and uh, it's about the patriarch of an LA rich LA family harboring a secret about his wife um, and his their three daughters sounds like family drama 
family drama in LA uh, with also nature drama uh, in the background. Uh, Alice Finney, Rock, Paper, Scissors. Great title for a novel. She also wrote Sometimes I Lie. It's a little hard to tell maybe in the video, but this is like an aerial view of a wintry land forest. And then there's a little like chapel there. Ooh, it says murderously twisty tale. I like, I really like <laughs> this kind of thing, but also I feel like it's perfect because winter's coming soon. And is there something about reading, like if you're cozy inside and you're reading about snow and that's, I like it. Um, oh, so it's about a couple where things are not right. They exchange traditional gifts. Um, and every year on their anniversary, the wife writes a letter that she never lets the husband read. Um, the husband is a workaholic and a screenwriter. And then they win a weekend away in Scotland. It seems like what their marriage needs, um, but they didn't randomly win the trip. Something, something's going on. <laughs> something's going down. <laughs> Do to do, do Emily's House, a novel by Amy Belding Brown, um, who wrote Flight of the Sparrow. And this is about, uh, I think, Emily Dickinson. Yes, an evocative new novel about Emily Dickinson, who is a local. So this is actually about her maid, Irish immigrant Margaret Mather, who uh, bonded with the poet. And um, so it takes place in Massachusetts in 1869 um, when she starts work. And uh, yeah, she'll stay there for 30 years. So what an interesting new perspective on Emily Dickinson, who is already such an interesting person. Beautiful Country by Kian Julie Wang. And this is a memoir uh, by, so, oh, it says in Chinese, uh, the word for America is translates as beautiful country. And so it's about a girl who arrives in New York City when she's seven. Her parents are professors. Her family is, quote, illegal. And um, so they end up working in sweatshops. She takes refuge in the library. Uh, and then it's all about her growing up. And um, wow, this just sounds really good. Yeah, <laughs> it, just sounds, it sounds like it's just about her life, but like super interesting life. Uh, the Last Chance Library. Oh, look, more library stuff uh, by Freya Sampson. Oh, such a sweet cover with all the people like in the library doing the things like reading the books. There's a library cat that looks maybe the librarian with the book cart and do to do. How do we find out? Oh, there we go. Oh, it's a lonely librarian who's never left the sleepy English village where she grew up. Um, she's 28 years old. She just wants to spend her time buried in books. I mean, honestly, who can blame who can blame her? Um, but then her library is threatened with closure and she's forced to step out behind the shelves to save the heart of her community. Aw, and she has an eccentric band of dedicated locals. I love eccentric bands of dedicated locals. Woohoo! Two more books. <laughs> Uh, duh, which should we do first? Vanderbilt? <laughs> this one's unprocessed. I must have ordered it unprocessed by accident. So this is by Anderson Cooper. I didn't know this, but it turns out he's related to the Vanderbilt family. And this is uh, his own story about the rise and fall of an American dynasty. It looks like it's co-written by someone named, Ka by, named Catherine Howe. Um, yeah, so it's his mother's family, and he starts out back in the 1800s and then goes all the way to 2018 and sort of shows what happened to the family. Um, this book is obviously Anderson Cooper's a big name, so this book has definitely been getting a lot of buzz. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Anne Cleves, The Heron's Cry. This is a Detective Michael Matthew Venn novel. Very nice landscape in the background, a little bit forbidding. Uh, and yeah, this is, uh, I think, just the latest edition in one of her uh, popular detective series. That's it for my reasonably sized box, and we will work on getting all of these books out on the shelf.